Shalom, y'all, as we go into our uh, actually second video in the series about the Yahad and who we are and what we believe. And uh, we're going to get into the form of uh, policies of our government, of how we run the Yahad here. And uh, it's important because uh, there's been so much abuse in religion, especially within the messianic ranks and church ranks, where you'll have one person who acts as the dictator and tells you the rules of everything. I mean, I could name some names, but I don't, I don't want to do that. But uh, there are there are a lot of um, little popes out there. They're trying to dictate what you must must not do, and uh, they sit up in a form of um, kingship, and everybody else is the servant of the king. And that's not at all what in the yahad we 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 want or care about. And you know, as I stated before, the yah yahad will not have a pope, an authoritarian, authoritarian, or an out. Uh, you know, anyone that's going to rule over everybody, we will not have one person who sits back and makes all the decision. All the power is distributed throughout all the members of the Yihad. Everybody has a vote. It's a part of the Yihad. Uh, we are Episcopal, thus holding the prime responsibility for peace and progress in the Yihad. Our elect, their elected bishops, our bishops are elected on. Uh, they're not just named because, of, you know, it's a good old boy network where I know this person, I put him in charge. They are voted on. And, um, they have to be qualified too. They have to be qualified for election. They have to uh, understand the teachings of the Yahad and what we believe. And like I said, we don't all have to agree, but we have to have a common understanding of the best way to run the Yahad in unity and peace and keep it going. And, you know, and as I said, the prime responsibility is for peace and progress. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're qualifying for election, you have to go through the nun training course or equivalent of being ordained as a in the Yihad or similar agency. In other words, when you come in, you have to be, you know, you have to be uh, ordained. You can't just come in off the streets. You know, a lot of problems within church history and, and, and messianism is, is if you come into the church or congregation, if you've got any kind of talent, for instance, uh, if you're a good radio person or a TV person, a lot of times we don't care if you've got money. Uh, we don't really care, you know, what you believe as long as you're helping us with our goals. And, and in the Yahad, we want to make sure that we're all on the same page as far as understanding how to lead the Yahad in peace and, you know, progression. We, you're just not going to come in and just do what you want to do. You, you have to come in and you be taught and understand the basic premise of the Yahad. And at that point, we will, you know, ordain you. And at that point, you come in, you can start making decisions and, and of that nature, but you can't just come in off the street and just uh, start pushing your own agenda. Uh, I've seen it happen in many, uh, many groups, congregations before where someone comes in, most time not even a true believer in what they're there for, but because they have talents like singing and stuff like that, they take the whole yihad or take the whole congregation off course of what it really was supposed to be. So you're going to be ordained and, and you're going to be voted on. And once, like I said, once you are in the yihad, you get that chance to vote. But the primary, the final decision on matters to be made by the uh, Bakar, a chosen decision maker. The Bakar is chosen out of the eldership at random before the business of any meeting. And, and the reason why is sometimes you will have a vote of, uh, let's say there's six elders, and I'm just exaggerating here, but let's say there's six, six or 12 elders. Three vote one way, three vote another, or six and six, you know what I'm saying. You've got to have that person to make the decision. So before every meeting, uh, there'll be an elder chosen to basically break that tie to make the decision. And that's basically how we do that. Outside of bishops and elders, one may be considered a temporary shot or a deacon, an ordained, a permanent deacon. A deacon may preach, or if a deacon has some other specialties in ministry, not preach. A temporary deacon is he or she who is expecting to move up, uh, move up to eldership. Bishop, elder, deacon, these are not titles of authority, but responsibility. The only authority is Messiah, who is the head of the assembly. And, and, and let's go here. A lot of people get a title or as bishop or elder or preacher, and it seems to go to their noggin. And they forget the whole reason of why they were given that title or why um, you know, they were called by Yah to do these things. And, and they get carried off in, into title and not so much into teaching. And remember the last video, I, 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 what we taught on, we taught that the Yahad, we are here to correct this world, to fix this world, to, to heal this world. And, uh, you know, you can be bishop so-and-so or elder pastor so-and-so, 
And if you're not doing anything, your title is useless. So in the Yahad, we don't just have titles, we have responsibility. They're all working people. Uh, Jackson Snyder, uh, Daniel, Governor, and these people like that, I can testify they don't just sit back and, and receive money and, and donations and stuff. These are some of the hardest working people that I have seen within ministry because we all want to make this thing work. So you're not going to come into the Yahad and get a title and get all the glamour and glory and stuff like that because you're going to be in the trenches with the rest of us um, working. Uh, you know, the, worker, the, work, the workers are newcomers to the government of the Yahad, exploring the faith and learning the ancient and modern ways. They stand under the guidance of an elder until their studies are done. And then they may either accept or reject. They, they, they will be accepted or rejected by the Yahad proper. In other words, when someone wants to come into the Yahad, they're basically put under someone. And, and like when we came in, we got, we got phone calls and stuff like that. You go through an interview process. Like I said, you just don't come in and join. There's questionnaires. There's things that you do because we want to find out first where you're at, first if you're serious, and first if you're really going to work to make this thing happen. Uh, if, you know, like I said, we're not going to let you just come in and, and sit on the back row or sit on the pew. You're actually going to come in and you're going to do the work that you're supposed to do. Um, it, it's fun. We have, like I said, we have so much uh, educational things. We have classes. We have videos that's been done before. You know, you, if you, you'll know, you'll learn so much. I promise you, unlike other con congregations or uh, ministries and stuff like that, you're not going to give a get a six week course and then you're in. You're going to know exactly what you're learning. Everything from the, you know, our halakha, the way we walk, the way we follow our Messiah, the calendar, which is very important, uh, the solar calendar. You're going to learn about that. You're going to learn about the days so of the week. You're going to learn a lot. That when you come out, you're going to be you're going to really be educated. And like I said, that's a lot of things that you don't see in other um, groups. I know in many churches and stuff coming up and being a part of many churches, you know, you took a three to six week uh, new members course and they gave you the basics. But when you came out, you just knew the basics. And, and when you come out of that course, they expect you to come in and be a vital member of that church. We don't do that here. We're going to make sure that you are educated. We're going to make sure you know what you know. Like I said, we know we're in different areas. So we know, we know that you're not going to be as experienced as others and stuff like that. But when that elder or person over you realizes that this person has come a long way and they are dedicated to this situation, we are going to let them come in. And when you come in, like I said, we expect you to work. Uh, there's plenty of things to do. There's a uh, clerical stuff that we, that needs to be done. Sometimes there's what I'm doing now, making videos, promoting the Yahad. There's books, teachings, there's organization skills. And we have boot camps and we have classes and stuff like that. Uh, we have uh, many skills that are needed within the yacht. Um, it's never enough people to do what we need to do. And, and, and be, realizing the vision is what we feel like Yahweh is wanting to happen in these days. We want to make it grow. We don't want it to see it, you know, ignite and then fizzle out. We want to make sure through future generations this yacht is still going. So that's the next part of this video that I wanted to do was up on the government of the yacht and how we work and how you can come into it. And another thing I'll, I'll throw in too, and I, I don't think Jackson would be upset about that. In the future, we are looking at bringing congregations into the Yahad too. And that's gonna be a great thing because of the things the Yahad has to offer, congregations or online meetings or whatever, is, is so much more than any other. Even, you know, I've been involved with the MJAA, the, uh, all these other different groups out there. And really, once they ordain you and set you off, you get resources, but you pay for them and things of that nature. And, you know, there's be some charge to some of the things we do, but a lot of our stuff is just free. A lot of the teachings and stuff we have out there are just free. And, and, and the personalities we have within this jihad are, are smarter than most people that I know out there. So what I'm saying is, is in the future, you're going to see congregations come into the jihad also. So we'll, we'll have a, you know, we'll have a, a congregational side to where we'll have congregations within the Yahad also. We have a lot of people that have meetings in our group now, and then we have some that are planning on buying property and, and building Yahads, living together, communities and things of that nature. So exciting things are happening, and you know we, we really want you to uh, be a part of it. And uh, thank you, this will be part two of this video, and 
Thank you so much. Shalom.